One of the biggest challenges in computer graphics has been able to create a photoreal digital human face. And one of the reasons that's so difficult is that unlike uh, aliens and dinosaurs, we look at human faces every day. They're very important to how we communicate with each other. And as a result, we're tuned into the subtlest things that could possibly be wrong with a computer rendering uh, in order to believe whether these things are realistic. And what I'm going to do in the next five minutes is take you through a process where we tried to create a reasonably photorealistic computer-generated face using some computer graphics technology we've developed, and also some collaborators at a company called Image Metrics. And we're going to try to do a photoreal face of an actress named Emily O'Brien, who's right there. And that's actually a completely computer-generated rendering of her face. And by the end of the talk, we're going to see it move. The way that we did this is we tried to start with Emily herself, who was gracious enough to come to our laboratory in Marina del Rey and sit for a session in light stage five. This is a face scanning sphere with 156 white LEDs all around that allow us to photograph her in a series of very controlled illumination conditions. And the lighting that we use these days looks something like this. We shoot all of these photographs in about three seconds, and we basically capture enough information with video projector patterns that drape over the contours of her face and different principal directions of light from the light stage to figure out both the coarse scale and the fine scale detail of her face. If we zoom in on this photograph right here, you can see it's a really nice photograph to have of her because she's lit from absolutely everywhere at the same time to get a nice image of her facial texture. And in addition, we've actually used polarizers on all the lights. Just like polarized sunglasses can block the glare off of the road, polarizers can block the shine off of the skin so we don't get all those specular reflections to take this map. Now, if we turn the polarizers around just a little bit, we can actually bring that specular reflection of the skin back in. And you can see she looks kind of shiny and oily at this point. And if you take the difference between these two images here, you can get an image lit from the entire sphere of light of just the shine off of Emily's skin. I don't think any photograph like this had ever been taken before we had done this. And this is very important light to capture because this is the light that reflects off of the first surface of the skin. It doesn't get underneath the translucent layers of the skin and blur out. And as a result, it's a very good cue to the detailed shape of the skin pore structure and all of the fine wrinkles that all of us have, the things that actually make us look like real humans. So if we use information that comes off of the specular reflection, we can go from a traditional face scan that might have the gross contours of the face and the basic shape and augment it with information that puts in all of that skin pore structure and fine wrinkles. And even more importantly, since this is a photometric process that only takes three seconds to capture, we can shoot Emily in just part of an afternoon in many different facial poses and different facial expressions.